Hello, hello. Today I am going to walk you through writing a list poem. Throughout my day-to-day -day life, there are many moments, big or small, where I feel moved to explain myself, sometimes even over-explain myself, or even um, excuse or defend myself. Perhaps you can relate. Sometimes, this, this happens only in my head, um, and it never even reaches the level of conversation, right? But I will find myself kind of rehearsing these reasons in case I need them. So I've been playing around with a poem as a way to need those reasons, even if it never comes to be interpersonally. A way to play with language in that direction, right? This is a, it's a pretty powerful, um, like energy that we bring to language, this desire to like explain or persuade or convince someone of something. It's a, um, a potent uh, generative way to come to language. Um, and a poem can be a way to, you know, move through and express these little defenses that might never, um, you know, come to be or be put into words uh, otherwise. Um, so, okay, so today I'm going to walk you through writing a list poem where you catalog your reasons why. Why what? Well, that's going to be up to you. Um, and uh, I'll, share, uh, I'll share two examples of these poems with you as well. So um, the first one, and you'll be able to check um, down, uh, down below here for the links to go and read these poems as well. This first poem is, um, it was one of my favorite poems as a kid. The case that it tries to make is one that felt apt and relevant for my life. Um, and I had a good portion of this poem memorized when I was a kid, in part because of the, um, because of the rhymes that it uses and the ways that that caught into my ear. And this poem is called Sick by Shel Silverstein. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy Ann McKay. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet. My throat is dry. I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks. I've counted 16 chicken pox. And there's one more that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue, it might be instamatic flu. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke, I'm sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin, my belly button's caving in. My back is wrenched, my ankles sprained, my appendix pains each time it rains. My nose is cold, my toes are numb, I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff, my voice is weak, I hardly whisper when I speak. My tongue is filling up my mouth, I think my hair is falling out. My elbow's bent, my spine ain't straight, my temperature is 108. My brain is shrunk, I cannot hear, there is a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail, and my heart is... What? What's that you say? You say today is... Saturday? Goodbye, I'm going out to play. Okay, that was Sick by Shel Silverstein, right? So reasons why the speaker of the poem are, cannot go to school today. Um, and the second poem that I want to share with you under this reasons why uh, is our kind of mentor poems for um, what we're going to write today is a poem called Mountain Dew Commercial Disguised as a Love Poem by Matthew Oldsman. Um, and I love this poem as well. I have taught it a whole bunch. And here it is. Here's what I've got. The reasons why our marriage might work. Because you wear pink but, wear, but write poems about bullets and gravestones. Because you yell at your keys when you lose them and laugh loudly at your own jokes. Because you can hold a pistol, gut a pig. 
because you memorize songs, even commercials from 30 years back and sing them when vacuuming. You have soft hands. Because when we moved, the contents of what you packed were written inside the boxes. Because you think swans are overrated. Because you drove me to the train station. You drove me to Minneapolis. You drove me to Providence. Because you underline everything you read and circle the things you think are important and put stars next to the things you think I should think are important and write notes in the margins about all the people you're mad at, and my name almost never appears there. Because you make that pork recipe you found in the Frida Kahlo cookbook. Because when you read that essay about Rilke, you underlined the whole thing except the part where Rilke says, love means to deny the self and to be consumed into flames. Because when the lights are off, the curtains drawn, and an additional sheet is nailed over the windows, you still believe someone outside can see you. And one day, five summers ago, when you couldn't put gas in your car, when your fridge was so empty, not even leftovers or condiments, there was a single 20-ounce bottle of Mountain Dew, which you paid for with your last damn dime, because you once overheard me say, I liked it. Okay. So, and again, go and, you know, pull those links up. Look at these, look over these poems yourselves um, if, if that's something that you want to do. Um, I want to point out, notice how Olsman is using, so you see he's got this at the beginning of the sentences throughout because, 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 because. He's using a device there called anaphora, which is one of my favorites, by the way. And once you uh, start to look for it, like, you'll find it everywhere. Um, and anaphora, it means to repeat a word or phrase at the beginning of a line right? Instead of kind of repetition that comes at the end of the line in some other, um, mom in some other, um, elements and some other kinds of poems. So here he's reading the, repeating this because, because, because he's kind of changing what comes after that, right? Because you, because you, because when, because when, and then at the end of the poem, there's that one last big item on his list, right? And then, and one day, um, and his, his, his items on this list, Oltzman's reasons why, um, they're, they're emotionally not all the same, right? Some are kind of landing more funny. Some are um, a bit more moving. Some are a bit kind of shorter and clippier. Some of them are a bit more um, in-depth and complex, right? And so that because is kind of like gathering them all up as like these items of this list, right? Um, and kind of like wrapping them into this um, reasons why poem. Um, and... Yeah, I just love that poem, so I'm just excited to share it with you as well. Um, so, and back, okay, so the Silverstein, right, is um, is using an anaphora also here. Uh, so this re repeating at the beginning of a, a lot of the lines in here, the word my, right, and also using rhyme at the end of the lines um, to kind of propel this list of symptoms forward. Um, using uh, the, the sound of the words to kind of give the list its own kind of sense, even as the items on the list are becoming a, a bit more and more absurd. Um, and notice how this poem also includes a kind of surprise twist or turn at the end, right? Where um, there's all this tremendous energy that is coming, that has, that has been built up through the rhyme and through the like passion of like the reasons why, um, and and through the anaphora uh and then like the whole thing like becomes obsolete right um at that moment where the um the you comes in right what's that you say you say today is saturday goodbye i'm going out to play um and ultimate as well is addressing the you kind of throughout the poem right for silverstein the the you comes in like right at the very end at that moment and for Olsman it is folded um way more into it the sort of recipient of these reasons why is being addressed this you in the second person like throughout from the start so what i'd like you to do is make a list of cases persuasions that feel really alive for you right now or that did once 
or that maybe they don't affect you personally, but they you are close to them or witnessing them, and you've compelled they've compelled you in some way. Um, so this can be like things that you don't want to have to do, right? Like going to school in Silverstein's poem. Um, things that you do want to happen, um, like in Oltzman's poem, right? Like making a case for like the success of this marriage. Um, or anything else that you feel or have once felt like really passionately about like needing um, to convince or persuade someone of or explain. Um, and I'm going to wait here for two-ish minutes while you make your list. All right, so just jot these down, anything like that, um, these, these cases of pers persuasion, things that you feel like need um, convincing or, or persuasion that you feel strongly about. Um, and just write them down um, and, um, and, then, and then we'll get going again. You're just making a brainstorming list right now. So this can just be, you know, shorthand that will help you remember what these things are, right? You're doing great. Keep jotting them down. What's like something that maybe you often find yourself kind of, um, you know, rehearsing, you know, an explanation of or something that you often find yourself resisting wanting to do um, or, um, or, or often finding yourself kind of convincing others um, in the position of like convincing others to, to do or have happen. Anything like that. Just write it down on this list. Okay, feel free to pause here if you need longer. If you have made it to a brainstormed list of 10, that is awesome and super duper. If you're close, that's good too. Um, now, kind of look back over your list and with these things that you've written down, see if there's one that kind of hums for you in a different way that feels like, ooh, that's kind of like, um, there's like something there or... Um, you know, one that you feel that you could kind of tap for that energy and write about more and circle that if there is one that kind of speaks to you in that way. And if there's not, then just um, circle uh, the third one on your list, uh, whatever that happens to be. Um, and that's the one you're going to work with for this um, for this next part. So this next part, um, and we're going to do this in a couple of in, in a couple of different stages. And this first one is really just going to be your your um, your draft of writing a poem where you present your reasons why, one by one, or just getting them down on paper, right? Tapping into that energy of whatever this one is that you've selected to work with more, thinking about, okay, who's on the other end of this, right, that needs to be convinced. Um, and as you write your reasons down, um, letting each one perhaps reveal the next reason to you. Right? So at a certain point, you might feel that you have um, written down already all of the ones that are um, ex like uh, accessible to you easily. Keep going. Right, The fun part here will be letting yourself um, get to ones that surprise you. Um, you might think already that you know all the reasons to rattle off, so write those down and then keep going. Start writing and see where it leads you. Just follow it. Right? So you're going to write a first draft where you simply write down what comes to mind here. You're going to let yourself get it down all on paper, and then we'll keep going. Okay, You'll come back and revise. Um, so pause here and set yourself a timer for 
10 or 20 minutes, um, you know, depending on just your speed and what feels right to you, give yourself a little bit of time pressure of a container, but enough time to kind of sink into this um, and get some things down on paper, okay? So um, pause it here, and I want you to do this part right now of get some things down on paper. Um, if it's it, it now is a great time. So even um, even five minutes will be really, really awesome. But if you have more time, that's great. Okay, and when you're ready, that when you keep going here, uh, hopefully you have just hit play again after having hit pause and given yourself some time to get your first draft down of pouring out your reasons why and writing beyond the part where um, there are reasons you already know and letting yourself be surprised by what comes after that. Um, so you have this now, right? So, and as promised, the re the my reason why um that it works to let yourself just have that first draft period of getting it all down is because you are coming back and revising so let's do that now okay so as you revise and some people like to just start rewriting this again on another notebook page some people like at this point to go move from notebook to typing and um, kind of revising as you go like that you or you could type up exactly what you have right now or maybe you already typed your first draft. And for this, you can just copy and paste it and look right below that to kind of give yourself another version to work with or copy and paste it into a different document. I like to just copy and paste it right below it. Um, so that way kind of all my versions are in one section. Um, and also that means that you can always kind of revert back to your first draft or at least have the assurances that you can, which I think lets you get a little bit riskier in revision. So we're revising now, and as you revise, I want you to think back on how Oltzman used the anaphora, that because, because, because you, because you, because when, because when, and how Silverstein used the my, 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 and also the rhyme at the end. Think about how you want to use some repeating elements to link the items on your list together and create a kind of music that also, another amazing thing about repetition is that it also, it's not just repetition, right? It's repetition that gives you room to have other parts of your poem wander off and veer off or change change up or surprise the reader, right? Like with Oldsman's because, it's not just the because, it's that sometimes it's because you and sometimes it's because when and sometimes the because isn't even there at all, right? Um, so thinking about how, and this might already be some element, maybe when you wrote it down, you just kind of fell into an anaphora as by, by nature of kind of listing your reasons why. If so, that's great, right? Um, or maybe you don't really at this point have a repeating element in your draft, and in which case you may want to look for what's something that's already going on in your draft that's interesting. Is there like a word or phrase that you want to kind of play with keeping in the air a little bit more and maybe bring to the foreground a little bit by um, repeating it throughout your poem? Is there a, a word in your poem that you feel for you is like really key or maybe was somewhere right around the moment where things got surprising and weird for you and like went from being like the reasons that you already knew to rattle off to the ones that kind of revealed themselves to you while you were writing? Like some, some word that's kind of centered around a moment where things feel like they shift in your draft. Maybe there's a word in there that you want to pull out that, um, that sound from that word or something um, visual uh, from that image there and kind of play with repeating that throughout your poem. Um, so think about that, right? That's one, that's one piece here of your revision is think about what elements you might already have happening in your first draft that are repeating or that could be repeating and just get intentional about that, right? Um, and you can choose here kind of where you want to fall on the dial of like a little bit goes a long way or like amping this all the way up, right? Um, like basically whether to pull this element throughout your entire poem, wrapping it around it, um, or, you know, kind of in, in, in different pieces and parts of it. The, these repeating elements can be a kind of a little 
flashlight, right? Shining kind of attention to different moments. Um, or they can be like a really steady drum beat kind of throughout. Um, also, as you revise, I want you to think about what about giving your poem some twist near the end, right? Whether it's a reason why that stands out from the rest of the reasons why for some reason, or just that you go more in depth on that last reason than you do the other ones. So we're kind of drilling in or deepening. Um, or like in the Silverstein, some kind of situational surprise that like changes the nature of what's happening, right? And that poem is kind of like has made the, the whole thing obsolete um, aside from just sort of like the joy of having gone through, um, gone through the poem um, or like something else entirely. Right, but kind of looking at the end, because the, the thing about a list poem is you've kind of set these things into motion, and so how are you gonna, you're, you're building this energy throughout, um, and what do you wanna do with it? What direction do you wanna send it in? How do you wanna get out of the poem, right? So look at the end there and think about um, maybe that as a place to shift up or change any repeating elements that you set into motion, or keep those in motion but shift something else about it, um, or veer off in some other direction entirely, right? Um, and that may mean reading, write, writing new stuff at this point or playing around with what you've already got or some combination. Um, so I'm so excited about your reasons why poems, your reasons why list poems. And by the way, if you have already taken the What's Your Poetry Magic quiz, Electric Owls, this is a list poem for you. Um, and Trilling Toad, this could also be an epistolary poem if you write it with, um, you know, with someone specific in mind, like really kind of keeping in mind, like who, who this recipient is of your, of your reasons why of your case. So thank you for writing with me today. Um, and, um, yeah, take care. Bye-bye.